Hi everyone. My name is James and I have a rather, I was invited to speak with you today because I have a rather unique position. To the best of my knowledge, I am the world's only autobiography advocate. It's true, I actually Googled it. There are no relevant results. I also Googled my love life and there are no relevant results either. But, so maybe Google is broken. It's not broken. An autobiography advocate is just what it sounds like. A person who advocates for others to begin writing their autobiographies. Because your story is important, your story has meaning, and it needs to be preserved and shared, both with the people that you love and with the people in the future that you will never meet. I've got some credentials for my unique position. I've been writing my own autobiography. As you heard him say it, it's called the Jim Report. Basically, every month I send an email to my closest 180 family and friends and tell them what I did for that month. It's currently running at over 225,000 words and I've been writing it for about eight years. In fact, a portion of it was taken out, uh, specifically the time that I was in law school, was taken out, condensed, and turned into a book. What I hope to speak to you about today is writing your autobiography and about writing your autobiography, how to do it, the reward in doing it, and why it's important. And when I mean writing, I mean not just stopping at 140 characters. I'm talking about something deeper than that. Another trait of any good autobiography advocate is that they like to talk about themselves, which I'm going to do right now. <laughs> I have a story that I would like to share with you. There might be a point to the story. It's way over there. Maybe we'll find it. Maybe we won't. Let's talk to you. My story that I'd like to share with you will take me a few years back, back when I was in law school, and finals were approaching. It was that study week before finals, and I was getting stressed out. No, oh, these all these these law things and tort some things I never figure out what those were and contracts and con law and I, I just couldn't take it anymore and I I remembered somewhere maybe it was a TED talk maybe not but I remember somewhere that exercise yes if I got exercise I would be less stressed so all right I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get some exercise I'm gonna be less stressed and we're gonna take on that law stuff so I go over and get on my my jogging clothes, and I'm going to go over here, okay, I'm going to go on a jog, go on a jog, get some exercise, be less stressed. So I get in my apartment, and I start doing a clunk, 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 clunk. All right, here we go. I'm going clunk, clunk, I'm getting some exercise, I'm doing really good. Yeah, there's the jogging path, I hit the jogging path, and here we go, getting a lot of exercise, releasing those endomorphins, yeah, oh yeah, here we go. I am getting really less, less tired. I am getting more tired. Getting quite, quite tired. What, what am I doing right now? What am I doing right now? There should be a stop somewhere, but it keeps on going. Oh, okay, okay, landmark, landmark. I'm gonna hit that landmark, and I'm gonna turn around, and then you'll straight. And so I keep going, and I go, and I turn around, and I come back, and oh my God, I ran so far. There's so much path, I only went halfway. So I keep on going. I keep on going. I'm like, all right, I just gotta get to that point. I make a left turn. I get back to my apartment. And I'm like, there's gotta be so much path. And like, oh, a, sh a shortcut. And so I I'm gonna take a shortcut and, and I'm gonna cut my time down. So clonk, 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 get ready to take my shortcut, clonk, clonk. Oh, there's a new building there. Hello, new building. I didn't see you before. Okay, clunk, clunk, okay. So, here's the path, there's the turn, there's the field of grass. All right, clunk, clunk, clunk. We're gonna 45 degree this, here we go. Clunk, 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 shot, clunk, squish, clunk, squish. Clunk, squish, clunk, squish. There was a problem. It had first been clunk, clunk, and that was clunk, squish. So, I go and I, I take a look at the uh, bottom of my foot. There's this hole in it. And I'm like, oh, that's odd. There wasn't a hole there before. I take a look back around and remember that new construction building? Well, 
They had just finished it, and there was a construction beam, and they, they had buried it into the ground, but they didn't bury it all the way. Specifically, they had buried about four inches of it, which thanks to the weather became pointed, jagged, and just a little bit rusty. And what I had done was, in the pursuit of my shortcut, I had taken my foot, uh, inserted it into the metal shard, where it went through the shoe, the sock, and into the foot area. And then as soon as I connected all these facts, oh my god, I am in pain! I am in pain! This hurts. This hurts a lot. So sort of a clomp a limp, clomp a limp. Back to the apartment where I continued to suffer a little bit more. And then the next day I went to a doctor clinic thing. And I went in there with my damaged foot and they treated it. And one of the things they did to treat it was take a Q-tip and shove it on there, which hurt even more than the actual incident. <laughs> and they gave me crutches. I had never had crutches before. I learned how to use these crutches for the first time. And of course, this is when the law school is under construction, so classrooms are spread all across campus. So, get lots of upper arm exercise. Oh boy, I'm really less stressed now. <laughs> so. I was able to tell you that story because I wrote it down. I wrote down that story and I read it before coming here and talking with you today. Because I wrote it down, I was able to share it with you. If I hadn't written that story down, maybe I would have remembered some of it, but not with all the details I just gave you. Probably would have been something like, oh yeah, there was this one time I was running, and I shoved a piece of metal through my foot, and it hurt real bad. I was like on crutches. But I wrote it down, and I was able to get that story. And because I did the gym report, I was able to keep and preserve dozens, hundreds more stories. Like the time when I was in the Middle Eastern desert and I was stuck there for 14 hours and required three different forms of transportation to escape. Or the time when I was in a winter cabin away from all civilization and I had a latrine emergency. But as I was going to the latrine, I was afraid that I was going to be eaten by imaginary bears. So I decided I would make bird noises to scare the imaginary bears. Or, or the time when I got my cat, my first cat, and I loved my cat, but my cat didn't love me. And it found a hole in the wall of my house to go and hide. And I couldn't find the cat because there were so many holes, a surprising number of holes in the walls of my house. But, and I was getting so anguished, I was beginning to forget what he looked like. But I knew he was alive because when I wasn't looking, he'd come out with the food of the lip box. I'm able to tell you these stories because I wrote them down and I'm able to share them with you today. But it's, it's not just about that, just about sharing for the here and now. I'd like to give you a short story about Mary Chestnut. Mary Chestnut was a white woman born in the South in the antebellum era before the Civil War. She married James Chestnut, a wealthy plantation farmer, and they were basically the, the top one percenters of the South at the time. James Chestnut became a senator for South Carolina. He resigned after Abraham Lincoln um, was elected and became a high-level aide to President, uh, Confederate President Jefferson Davis. But the story is really on Mary, because what Mary did, she wrote everything down in an extensive diary that was later turned into a book, where she described the path of the Civil War from the beginning to the end from her unique perspective. She was there at the Battle of Manassas and what happened there. She was there for high-level talks when they came to President Jefferson Davis' house, talking about the paths and the different charts of where the Confederacy was going. She was an ardent supporter of the Confederacy, but had some serious questions about the slave trade. What Mary Chestnut gave us was the rough edges of life in that time. And I'm just going to put this back on. 
you know, running around with a microphone, you know. So, I, if Mary Chestnut had not written her Civil War diaries, we would have still known that there was a battle of Manassas. We would have still known that Jefferson Davis was the Confederate president, but we wouldn't have gotten the life that came with that. And it's hard to say, but she was one of the few that wrote it down, one of the few where her works got saved. Imagine when you write your story, the stories that you'll save for others to come. Imagine the stories that you've lost because you haven't written them down. No one is going to write your autobiography, so we need to get started. I have three tips for you to get started on writing your autobiography. Write your story, share your story, and enjoy your story. Write your story. Pick an interval that's comfortable for you. Maybe in the early part of the day before the husband wakes up and the kids roll out of bed and your life turns into a whirlwind. A couple paragraphs here and there. Maybe pick one night a week that you can have some time for yourself to gather your thoughts and reflect. For me, it's once a month. Basically, what I do is nothing, and then at the end of the month, I realize how much I've procrastinated, and I have to get this done by the deadline, really type it, type it out really fast. That is not a healthy system. But it is the one I've been doing for eight years, so I guess I better stick with it. And it's not easy. As you know, nothing, do, nothing worth doing well is easy. But there is a reward to it. And that brings me to my second point. Share your story. Your autobiography isn't going to do anyone any good if you put it in a lockbox and hide it in a cave. You have to share it. Now, the scope of who you share it with is, can be large or small. You can share it with just your partner, maybe an email to a small group of friends. Or if you're more extroverted, a blog post. What's important is that you do share it because the reward is immediate feedback. You get information right away from your hard work. You bring an experience with others that connects them on a deeper level. I, maybe, this isn't the, maybe this is the reason that I don't have a Twitter account. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Twitter. But I do not believe that the human experience can be encapsulated in 160 characters. We need something deeper. We still need long form writing in this world. And we need you to produce it. Brings me to my last point. Enjoy your story. Enjoy the life that you are living so you can write about it. Enjoy what you are doing, because if you don't enjoy it, it's not going to be worth it. And I'm not saying life is going to be all enjoyable. You need to record your tragedies, your hardships, but also the joys and the rewards that come with life. Because this is big. If we don't write, we will be written on. And if our history our history is not recorded. It's going to be decided by those who always write the history, the political elites, the ones in power. We don't need to let that happen. We shouldn't let that happen. I told you at the beginning of this that I was the only autobiography advocate. But I hope, after this talk, I'm not the world's only autobiography advocate anymore. Thank you.